So most of you know that Singapore's national animal is the lion and our national flower is the Vanda Miss Joachim. But how many of you know what our national bird is? Huh? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look! Now so many plants and animals! <laughs> Hey, hello! So whenever it's National Day period, I get really excited because it's also Little Red Jungle's birthday and we just turned two years old. Ooh, okay, so to get into the National Day spirit, we're out here looking for Singapore's official, unofficial national bird, the Crimson Sunbird, which is also the bird in the Little Red Jungle logo. So if you're ready, let's go! So we actually have seven different species of sunbirds that you can find in Singapore and the two more common ones are the olive-backed sunbird and the brown-throated sunbird. Now they may seem very similar at first glance because they're like olive and yellow birds with shiny, shiny heads. But the way to tell these two birds apart are already in their names. Okay, but first you need to know that sunbirds are sexually dimorphic. So if you see that it is colourful, it is probably a male. And so the olive-backed sunbird has a olive-brown back with a shiny iridescent throat. And the brown throated sunbird has a olive brown throat with a shiny iridescent back. And the females on the other hand are harder to differentiate and they do look very very similar except for the colour of their eyes. But yeah, so for these two species, you can actually see them very regularly especially if you live near a neighbourhood park. And some of them may even build a nest like this if you have a tall plant along your HDB corridor. Okay, but today's video isn't about these two small yellow little birds because we're out here looking for their cousin. So everyone, I would like you to meet Singapore's official, unofficial national bird, the Crimson Sunbird. Okay, so in 2002, there was actually a poll done by Nature Society Singapore to choose what our national bird is. And there were many candidates, including the second place winner, the white-bellied sea eagle. But ultimately, a lot of nature enthusiasts voted for this beautiful crimson sunbird because it is small and red and Singapore is a little red dot, so it is such a perfect fit. However, although it already won the poll, getting it into the books as our national bird is a little bit more complex than that uh, and it requires like, you know, roping in our government and all those kind of things. And for now, that is why I still say it's unofficial, right? It is our unofficial official national bird. So for this particular sunbird, unlike the other two, you won't usually find them in too urban of an area. And they are indeed a little bit more uncommon. However, when you do get the chance to spot them, the male's bright red colour is pretty hard to miss. And so for a lot of people, when they see these birds around, be it the two more common yellow ones or the crimson sunbird, they will think that they are humming birds. And I get it, because sunbirds do look like hummingbirds because both small size, both move around very fast, and both have very long, slender beaks. But genetically, these two groups of birds are nowhere related, and the place that you can find them don't even overlap. So alongside the honey eaters in Australia, sunbirds and hummingbirds are a perfect example of something called convergent evolution. So when people say evolution, most of us are familiar with the idea that you know there's like one ancestor animal, then through time, you no know, slowly other different species will branch out with different appearances and different traits. Well, that is actually called divergent evolution. Convergent evolution, on the other hand, is actually just the opposite, right? It is where two or more separate and different species slowly evolve to look like each other over time. And this is because certain traits are favoured for certain behaviours or environments. So for hummingbirds and sunbirds as an example, they look similar because this is the optimum body structure for a bird with a nectar feeding lifestyle. So they need a small body and a long slender beak to reach into the flower so that they can have access to the nectar. And then their ability to fly fast allows them to hover. So convergent evolution is actually more common than you think. And another big example that you confirm know of are your dolphins and your whales, right? Although they are mammals, through thousands of millennia, limbs become fins, body becomes streamlined, and they start to look like fish. And so back to our dear crimson sunbird, I think that's another layer as to why it's perfectly representative of Singapore, right? 
I mean, yeah, sure, Singapore, great, small, I get it. But Singapore is also about its people. And I like to think that, yeah, everyone is different, but we can find similarities, especially if we adapt, grow, and share experiences together. And just like the crimson sunbird, even though Singapore is small, we can still do great at what we need to do. And this marks the end of this very short but thematic episode. But before we go, I would like to give a big shout out to Mrs. Chu, Mr. Chu, Spotman, Sky Baby, Ing Le, Hija Queen, Kaysen, Limpert, Spinghu, Master Just Juice, Jablock Tango, Amal Dilo, Neko Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Crooked Spider, Low Eli, Big Three Circles, Amy, Nero, Angel, and Emmy. Uh, thank you for supporting this channel directly. And if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Do also follow me on all my other social media platforms and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out there then suddenly maybe you see one red bird sitting down there then if you look closely, oh, crimson sunbird and then now you know it's our national bird. Okay, you learned it here first. Bye-bye.